pretty much every SAT is going to have some sort of quirky percentages question. But we know that no matter what the, the weird thing is, the open formulas are really going to help us. So we've got to stay organized here. If we just think about percentages kind of in our natural way, we're going to run into trouble because we don't think about them right. So we have to make sure the open formulas are there to help us out. So we have two open formulas, one that looks like the word open and one that has this one plus or minus P because sometimes we have to do a percent increase or decrease. So let's just take it one piece at a time here. The regular price of a shirt at a store is $11.70. The sale price of the shirt is 80% less than the regular price. Okay, stop there, right? So 80% less than the regular price. So I'd probably keep reading anyway, but let's just do this one step and, and there we go. We've got to use this formula because we have a, a change in percent. So 80% less means one minus 0 0.80 or 0.8 because that's 80% less. What's the original? Well, the then per points us to the original value, right? So the then is pointing us to tell us that the original value, the O, is the regular price, which you probably would have figured out anyway because that's kind of the starting point. So there you go. And then we're trying to find the sale price. So that's the new value. So let's just do that, right? So uh, one minus 0 0.8 is 0 0.2 and 0 0.2 times 1170 is 234. So uh, 234 is the sale price. Okay. Uh, now they say the sale price uh, is 30% greater than the store's cost. So here's another thing we can do. So greater than, still the one plus or minus P, but now we need to go one plus 0 0.30 because we are increasing it. It's a 30% greater. This is the this is the best thing about the open formulas is they're very literal. Um, and the than is pointing us to the cost. So the cost, we don't know. And this is a classic SAT move with um, with percentage questions is now we have to do it in reverse. So the sale price uh, da, 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 is 30% greater. So that's 234 here. So now instead of multiplying, which is kind of how we think about percentages and how the, the step one kind of primed us to think about them, now we have to divide. So we're going to have uh, X times 1.3 is 234 divided by the 1.3. And X is 234 divided by 1.3. 1.8. So if we put it in dollars and cents, $1.80, uh, but if you bubbled it as 1.8, it's still correct. So uh, basically for these student produced response questions, any equivalent value will work. So I think technically even 18 over 10 should get you an answer here, but it's a price, right? Put it in dollars and cents. That's just logical. So that way you kind of know what you're doing here. The stories a lot of times help on these questions. Um, and yeah, okay, fine. It makes sense that the cost of the shirt is, you know, much lower than the price of the shirt. And then the sale price um, is, you know, barely above cost, but that makes sense too. So the story can help us. But the, the, the big takeaway for a question like this is we know that percentages on every SAT are going to have some sort of weird thing that really tries to mess with us. But the open formulas were deliberately designed to prevent that mistake, to, to prevent those traps from getting us. And so we see one right here our temptation is going to be to multiply. So you, you got to make sure you're putting things in the right places and thinking about these formulas work so you don't just do what instinctively feels like the right thing with these two numbers you've got. You're actually putting things in the right place. And a lot of times on the SAT, we instinctively want to multiply, but we end up dividing. So the formula keeps it straight for us.